Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. And okay, make sure we're working properly. I to see all the buttons on the screen show up. So, um, thanks for joining me. Welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 565. And the topic today is ladies, what is your calling? Why are you here? And I'm meaning this from the point of view of evoking some thoughts for you because, frankly, this is something that has been on my mind lately. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know why I'm here and what I'm about. So my name is Barry Selby. Hi, Jen. Nice to see you. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women, high-achieving women, create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and every day now for uh, over two years, well, every day for the last mm, year and 10 months, but for over two years now, I've been doing these talks every day called messages from the masculine to inspire your feminine heart. And yesterday I did a talk, um, that was episode 564, um, which is talking about women and purpose. And today I want to take it a little deeper and more directed because I felt there was something miss not missing, but something wasn't included yesterday. So today's topic is, ladies, what is your calling? Why are you here? Because I want to talk to the women particularly, and men, if you're listening, this can relate to you as well, that we all have reason to be here, like, duh, obviously. Well, <laughs> it may not be obvious, but to me, we all have reason to be here. If you're on the planet, you have something to do. As Richard Buck in Illusions said, it's a way, on, way to discover if your mission on Earth is finished. If you're still here, it isn't. So if you're still alive, you've got stuff to do. So, um, okay, great. Oh, by the way, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it was first on Facebook Live, so I'm interacting with people directly. So thank you, Jen, for the connection. I will talk to them later. Hi Jennifer, nice to have you here, and I did see Karen in there early as well, so nice to have you ladies joining me. And again, this is Facebook Live, we'll go on to YouTube and my podcast later, I'll give you the links at the back end. So, let's jump in, shall we? Um, the biggest thing I want to talk about, because I've done a lot of talks before about men need to find purpose before they can have a relationship, because we as men are linear beings. So for us men, purpose is almost a must-have before we can function in life. Ladies, you don't quite have the same pressure but you also, have the, you also sometimes miss the boat of not saying, I want to do this. And the good news is we're changing. The culture is shifting massively because more and more women, thankfully, are stepping into leadership, be it in their personal lives, in business, in government even, because, you know, was it? I just saw a post today that in, I think it was in Arizona, no, Nevada, they have actually a majority of women in the house for the first time in, this, in the uh, state house, which is awesome. So things are shifting big time. But I also want to speak to you ladies, particularly about purpose and calling, because I am passionate about that, as you may have noticed from my talks over the year, over the last couple of years, because it took me a long time to figure out that for me, if I didn't know my purpose in place, I would mess up every relationship. And I did. So I know from experience for men, and for ladies, for your men who you know, remind if you want to remind them or haven't talked haven't talked to me about this, our purpose, our calling, our reason for being has to be in place for us to have a healthy relationship that works. The challenge for us before that, because we're linear beings, is we can't do things very well at more than one thing at a time. Ladies, one of the gifts you have in the feminine, when you embody your feminine majesty and power, is the ability to multitask fairly easily. Several things, in fact. That's why women generally are much better at raising kids than men are, because they can be going, taken, they can watching Tommy in front of them once they know that Sarah back there is doing something crazy. We men don't even know there's anybody behind us, because we're so linear. Hang on. <coughs> <coughs> my throat's still clearing up in this cold last week. So ladies, I want to speak to you about this because I've been guilty of talking about how men need to find their purpose before they have a relationship and I've omitted ladies in this conversation too because as I just said at the beginning of this, you ladies are absolutely um, purpose-driven too. And I call it a calling because it doesn't always show up the same way for different people. And I'm saying this in this way because for some women and I know some women out there, this is their strength. Raising the family, being a matriarch of a family is their calling and their purpose in life. But for a lot of women, it isn't. Not anymore, because again, things are changing dramatically. And I feel more and more there's a evolution out of an old paradigm of business, because the old business model was driven by men, created by men for men. If you ever saw the Mad Men show, that was the archetype back in the, was that 50s, 60s? And I know, I know as a kid, I saw the end of that in some, so many ways and watched it. But the thing is, even television portrayed that, and movies as well, 
where women were either at home or with secretaries, they weren't running the show. The good news is it's changing. The bad news is a lot of people are resistant to it. Let me say that again. A lot of men are resistant to it, as you may have noticed in various places of authority and power. Men aren't willing to give up that role to women. It's the old boys network type thing is the ad general term. It's misplaced, it's out of date, and it's expired, and it's time to move on. So ladies, what I'm inviting you to do um, blatantly is to start discovering for yourself what drives you, what your calling is, what, what puts you on the planet besides being a woman. Like, you are a woman, yes, wonderful, great to bring your gifts in the world that way, but what is it you're doing out there in the world that your gifts are meant to express to change, uplift, and inspire the world around you? I mean, we men need to do that too. That's why I do what I do with these daily talks and my coaching and the work I do with my audience. It's my purpose-driven work. We all have that, whatever that is. For some people, as I know, that I've, I, a lot of my friends, hang on again. <coughs> it's, it's, it's been tickling for a while. I guess I didn't talk much today. So when I'm talking, it's percolating stuff out. So excuse my coughing. <laughs> a lot of friends of mine are musicians. And for many of them, it's their God-given gift, their calling, their expression, their mission on earth to uplift people through their voice or their instrument. So that's one perspective. Like in my perspective, my, my own calling is about transforming the planet by awakening and inspiring the feminine in my coaching and in my speaking. It's still evolving because it keeps changing. It's one of the things I discover about purpose. It does keep growing and changing. It's not one thing stuck in it and you're never changing. So there's a range of what a calling purpose might be for you. And if you're someone who knows what it is, great. Now the question is, are you expressing it? Are you sharing it? Are you giving your gifts in the world? Be it whichever way it is, if it is through service, if it's through business, if it's through love and connection and intimacy, if it's through social change, whatever that is, it's nice to know what it is. It's more important to express it. So that's that piece I want to give you. Another point I want to say is that more and more now, this this culture, this planet, this arena we play in is absolutely hungry for feminine leadership, feminine mastery, feminine strength. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. I'm actually doing great. I, I This hit me two weeks ago, but it's just the last few days. It's like I just find myself once in a while just coughing. <laughs> I feel fine it's just clearing out whatever that junk is. So it's post. So thank you for the love, Jennifer. I appreciate that. So for the ladies, very clearly, it's time more than now than ever to awaken to your destiny, your calling, your purpose, whatever that is for you, that allows you to bring your gifts and your service to the planet, to the world, in a way that, yes, changes things around outside of you, but also uplifts you as well. Because I posted a, a, a meme yesterday, it's been shared all over the place now, about how duty, and I call it actually, um, your duty versus love drive service. And that was one of the things I talked about was that when you do something from love, it uplifts you. When you do something from duty, I think I called it, maybe I called it work or something else, it actually makes you feel worse. So when it's love-driven service, love-driven gifts, love-driven mission, that's where things happen. Karen, I think I'd, I kind of had a feeling that you had, a, you had a calling to lead. I had that sense about you when we talked and when we met, and I would, echo, I would agree with that. Now the question's gonna be, who, what, and where? Like who are you gonna who are you gonna lead, where are you gonna lead them, and what are you gonna lead them about? So, you got some homework, I think. <laughs> and that's the thing for all of us: we have opportunities to reflect, to go within, and to really see for ourselves what drives us. I'm actually going to be going out tonight for a um, it's a holiday party for a bunch of us love coaches. We we've done this, we didn't do this very often. We we haven't done it for months. We've done one every six months so with the love coaches, the local love coaches, dating, matchmaking type people get together um, up at Casa Mar in Santa Monica. And to be totally transparent, uh, I'm going to say this because I'm saying it's public, aren't I? Yes, I am. I'm doing public Facebook Live. There's a wide range of us in the group. I'll say that much. And some of the people in the group are more focused on partnering people up than necessarily doing the deep work to heal people so they can love better. I'm in the latter group. My focus is predominantly to help my audience, which is mostly women, to heal their own hearts, to become better um, supporters of themselves, so they can become more effective partners in relationship. I'm not about matchmaking or dating apps. That's not my strength. Other people, that's their strength. So, um, 
yeah, I'll leave that one alone. I was about to go down a, a rabbit hole with that one. I'm not going to do that one. So knowing what it is that you do and being focused on that is a key thing. And the truth is, for some people, what they're doing now isn't that um, calling driven, that purpose driven. And that's the thing, is if you're in a career that's really supporting you in your lifestyle and everything else, it can be hard to look at, do you want to change all of that to go into some sort of purpose or calling? And I understand how you feel. There's a lot of people who go through that where they'd rather stay safe in a job than do anything else. However, a caveat, an opportunity. Your purpose work, your calling, can be something that is something you can birth and nurture on the weekends and your evenings outside of your job. It may in fact be nothing to do with your work. It might be something you do in your service, maybe on the weekends. Maybe your service is going to go out and do things in... Um, thank you, Karen. You love that I focus on the self-discovery, self-love, self-mastery aspect. That's not, that, thanks for putting it that way. That's what I do. Yes. Yes, it is what I do. So thank you for that. Um, so if you have a... If you're running a company, maybe your purpose in, is actually something that partners in with the work you do as leadership in the company. If you're working in a job that is secure and stable and you love the, what you're doing, it you take care of the bills and college and everything else, maybe your purpose is something that can be utilized in a way that doesn't impact your work. Because the thing is, some people think, well, it's going to be a purpose, I've got to like, clear the decks and get rid of everything and start over. I did that, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Let's be clear. I could have done it better probably if I go back now and look at how I did things. So I would say to you that there's other ways of doing it, and it can be a way of discovering what your driving force is that actually supports what you do in your work and also what you do in your personal life. So my question to you and your homework, yes, your homework, is to consider for yourself what it is you're calling about, what you're feeling called to do, like as Karen said about being called to lead. If you get a clarity of like a certain statement, that's great to start from. However, that declaration can be great, but then it's like, what comes behind that? What's the underneath that? What's the layers? What's the depth that that leads you into? Because it may be that, because, for example, if saying if you've been called to lead, it might be that you're being called to lead a movement that's going to change the planet, or maybe it's maybe it's being called to lead um, meetings with people who are recovering from some challenge of some sort. Maybe it's feeling a call, being called to lead a marching band. I mean, I'm being facetious, but there's such a wide range of what those those can be. So leadership shows up in many ways. So whatever it is you're feeling called to bring forward, be willing to inquire within that what that means for you and how you can present it. Because the other part also is what your purpose calling is may be um, say executable, <coughs> excuse me, but also maybe something you can you can um, express in more than one way. So it does in fact complement what you're doing. So in my work, it was around relationship coaching, but it keeps moving beyond that and deeper than that for me. So it's moving. Yours may do that too. So I invite you to consider that as your homework, to think about what it is that would, would actually inspire you and uplift you, feeling driven by an inner calling that will give you a direction to go into your life, in your mission, and your purpose to change something on the planet. Maybe small, maybe massive, you don't know. And of course, you never know when you start which it's going to be. But the key thing is, you got to start. So... I'll leave you with that to consider for tonight. That's the homework for tonight. Um, if you're someone who's looking for help in the area of relationship, particularly, but also self-support, self-love, self-control, excuse me, self-mastery, I'm just reading what you read there, Karen. Self-discovery, self-love, self-mastery. If that's something you're challenged with, reach out to me, I can help you. And I do, if you're not sure what even your purpose is or what, what that's about, I shared it yesterday, I do have a, um, a homework uh, assignment I gave to a, a workshop I taught about six, seven years ago which is, a, which is a purpose self-revealing exercise. If you want that, um, either message me, message me over social media or go, send me an email to my email address, which is barry at barryselby.com and mention that and I'll send it back to you as a, as a gift. It's just a PDF you can work through on, on your own time. I think that's it. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, unless otherwise notified. And you're welcome to join in to be in the conversation, to have a chat inquire, share, dialogue, etc. And also invite you to share it with your friends. So first of all, make sure you do get the notifications when I go live, because it's usually 5 p.m. Pacific time. There should be a box somewhere around this broadcast with a link so you can be notified when I go live. Um, secondly, this is at my Facebook Live I do every day, which does go onto YouTube and my podcast. I'll give you the links. The replays for my Facebook Lives go to my business page, which is Barry Selby, the author on Facebook. 
I then put them onto my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. It's my name everywhere on social media, except Instagram right now is still problem, still broken. I, I have my Instagram account's on hold right now. Let's put it that way. So anyway, Twitter, if anything else, is Barry Selby. On YouTube, if you subscribe to my channel, which is Barry Selby, there's a playlist in there called Messages from the Masculine. You, subscribe, you can watch all my broadcasts in there from newest to oldest. And I'm slowly rolling out, rolling out my podcast, also called Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. You can subscribe to that and you can download the audios and listen to them when you're driving, when you're cycling, doing other things when you can't look at the screen. And I think that's it. I appreciate you watching. I do appreciate your input and hopefully it's giving you some food for thought. I'm back in tomorrow with number 566. Not sure yet what the topic's going to be about. It should be something juicy. <laughs> we'll see. But I appreciate you watching and I appreciate the input. I will see you again tomorrow. So take care of yourselves. Bye.